Good afternoon. I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive, and uh, we're here at the Yonkers Wastewater Treatment Plant on the banks of the Hudson River, along with elected officials from uh, all four levels of government, or three of the four levels of government, uh, to talk about an initiative that we're taking jointly to try to repair a matter of uh, environmental justice that has been uh, an open issue for a long, long time. Uh, and you're going to hear from him in just a second, but we're very fortunate to be here with our Congressman, Jamal Bowman, who is uh, really setting records just in the first five months of his uh, tenure with us. He's going to talk a little bit about his advocacy. Uh, I'm also joined by County Legislator Jose Alvarado, who represents this area of Yonkers, and uh, Corazon Pineda, who is the majority leader of the Yonkers City Council and represents a district that includes this, uh, this area. We're also joined by the Amtrak train, and we're joined by uh, Vincent Kapicki, who is our commissioner of the Department of Cities. This is for our next press conference with the congressman on transportation. That's right. <laughs> so we're also joined by our commissioner of the Department of Environmental Facilities, which operates this facility and six other wastewater treatment plants in Westchester County, uh, Vincent Kapicki. And while Commissioner Kapicki isn't going to speak as part of the press conference, uh, he and his team members who are with him are the people that know the most about the technical operation of the facility and for any questions you may need to get the complete story that you want. I invite you to talk to the commissioner and any of his designated people uh, and once we finish our general presentation. We, um, we have a challenge uh, in this country and it's been identified by President Biden. It's been identified by our United States Senators Chuck Schumer and Kirsten Gillibrand, by our Congressman Jamal Bowman and other members of Congress which is for the United States of America to invest in the infrastructure all throughout this country. It's been identified that we as a nation are behind other industrialized nations in the world, and the congressman and his colleagues have been very aggressive about trying to identify uh, what types of projects we have in Westchester County, in the case of the congressman, in the Bronx, <clears throat> that lend themselves to the kind of uh, investment that we're talking about. Now, I know the congressman represents lots of different areas, and he's got a long list of things that he's trying to get, and we appreciate that this is part of that. We appreciate that the Congress has a long list of challenges that he is trying to work for and deliver. Uh, we are working with him uh, to try to help make the best possible case we can for this project, which, uh, to synopsize it very simply, is to, is to take this sewer treatment plant into the 21st century, uh, it has been for a long time uh, an important, largest area where we treat sewage in Westchester County. More of our communities are served by this plant than any of the other six plants that we have. It is, uh, it, it is a difficult plant to manage. Uh, Commissioner Kapicki and his team do an excellent job of dealing with it. But we have odors that come from this plant that are rightfully disturbing the neighbors who live here in this section, Ludlow section of uh, Yonkers. And it also represents, because we are around the Hudson River, the opportunity to do more with some of the area around us, which we really won't be able to capitalize on until we can come together to resolve the issues that relate to the sewer treatment plant. And uh, after uh, Congressman Bowman, I'll introduce some of the other officials who will each talk about uh, their element of this. But we turn to our Congressman because we know that he is our advocate in Washington, D.C. And he has shown already in just a few months that he's been on that he's been able to capture national attention on the issues that he's focused on. He's uh, certainly uh, gotten the attention of the leadership of the House. Uh, whenever he speaks, we listen, but they listen, which is even better. And so we certainly are happy to have him as an ally and an advocate. And uh, none of us can promise result, but we can promise a full effort being made to try to help the people of Yonkers. So we're happy to have as our partner in this effort, the Honorable Congressman Jamal Bowman. Mr. Congressman. Thank you so much, George. So about a week ago, uh, I sent a letter along with Senators Schumer and Gillibrand to President Biden uh, to encourage the White House and to encourage the President to go as big as possible when it comes to our overall infrastructure, but particularly our water infrastructure. Uh, as we know, our in infrastructure across the country is crumbling. Uh, it, is, it is old, it is dilapidated, and it needs, uh, it's, it's beyond disrepair. So we need the investments uh, from Washington to come in uh, to ensure that we rebuild our nation, uh, beginning with the bare bones of our nation, which is the water, pipes, and the overall uh, infrastructure. So we said that.
Something we're also in consistent communication with the White House on is this issue of environmental justice. Uh, environmental justice is something that I ran on, it's something that I'm passionate about. Uh, I am the chair of the subcommittee on energy on the science and tech committee, uh, so it's something that we're focused on in terms of our overall hearings, because if we don't fix our infrastructure, and I will add, end our dependency on fossil fuels, we'll never get to a nation uh, that realizes something we call the Green New Deal. Um, and when we think about this wastewater treatment plant, it serves over half a million residents uh, in Westchester County. And the residents are disproportionately Latinx. So this is, an, this is an environmental justice issue, this is a racial justice issue, and this is something that I look forward to working with the county uh, and the city on. But I'm really excited that our Senate Majority Leader, Senator Schumer, is also focused on this issue as well. So as the uh, county executive mentioned, uh, we don't guarantee results, but we guarantee we're gonna fight like hell. Uh, and when you fight like hell, and when you work in collaboration, which is what we're doing here, uh, usually you get results. Um, so let's continue to work together. I look forward to working with you all, and uh, we're gonna win this fight, and we have to. Let me say this one last point. Democrats now have control of the White House and the Senate and the House of Representatives. We got that control because we organized, not just across the state, but across the country. And because we have the control and the power in this moment, we have to go as big as possible when it comes to infrastructure, because we don't know what things are gonna look like a year from now. So now that we have control, this is our moment to do what's right uh, for Yonkers and Westchester County overall. So thank you all so much, and George, I'll pass the mic back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Congressman. Um, just as the Congressman is an advocate um, with the uh, President of the United States, just as the Congressman is an advocate with the President of the United States, so do legislators at every level of government advocate with the executives at every level of government. And uh, sometimes uh, executives don't always want to hear that no matter as much as we think have been done, more has to be done. And that is the role of a legislator, Congressman Bowman here in this district that covers the Bronx and Westchester. And uh, the next person who's going to address us, Jose Alvarado, who serves as Westchester County legislator in this district that includes this quadrant of the city of Yonkers. I was a county legislator for a number of years, going back a number of years. We were actually colleagues at one point on the Board of Legislators. And the district that I represented uh, on the other side of the county did not have the kind of needs that this district in Southwest Yonkers has. And so in this area, it takes a loud voice and a persistent voice. It takes the ability to understand the needs of people of color and people uh, whose first language may not be English, but they still need a loud voice. And he has certainly been knocking on my door in as nice a possible way, but as persistent as possible a way that we prioritize this project. So I'd like to invite Legislator Jose Alvarado from the county legislature to speak. Mr. Legislator. Uh, thank you, George, and thanks everybody for being here. Um, just a few months ago, uh, when we were beginning to hear about the infrastructure plans for President Biden, uh, George, as he usually does, uh, invited me for a cup of coffee, and I mentioned this plan, and finally covering this plan, because it's the largest and it's the only one that isn't covered. And it processes more than 50% of the sewage in this county. As mentioned before, this constitutes environmental injustice. And it needs to be corrected. Several, several ideas out there, well, yeah, let's build another one. Let's, guess what? It's not going to happen. We have to deal with this here and now. And our call is to the president, include the covering of this plan, include clean air for these people. If you haven't read it, read uh, Dr. Morrow's, who lives just around the corner from here, writing about the effects of health. Not immediately, but in the long term. 70 plus years here. We need to get this right for the people of Southwest Yonkers. I've been fighting for 20 years, elected or not elected. 108 million plus invested in here just to keep it functioning properly, just to update the engines, just to change the roof, just to do here and there. This is a huge place in Southwest Yonkers. It constitutes a large 
real estate in the 17th Legislative District. And Mr. Bowman, uh, uh, Mr. Latimer, thank you, thank you for coming together. Uh, you're in, what, five months now, Mr. Congressman? I, I just got a report that the previous county executive never set foot in here in eight years. That's how much care there is and there isn't. And we need to call things what they are. We need help. We need help covering this place. We need help. 69 million, we, we, we included it in our ask to, to the federal government. The congressman is supporting us in that. That would help us cover this place. But guess what? It, it's only the beginning of correcting something that is wrong. And the congressman, congressman mentioned it. We have aging pipes out there. When it rains, this plant gets over a million gallons immediately like that. And sometimes you have to let water run. We need to protect this river. County Executive and I have allocated $10 million to build a park right adjacent to this plant because we're looking forward to enjoying the river. The mayor is saying in the city budget is going to include another 10 million to make it an even bigger project with a boat dock and, and uh, free access to the river, which these people deserve. If we are good enough to process more than 50% of the county's sewage, we should be good enough to enjoy the river. And that's what we're doing, and that's what I'm here to do, and we'll continue to fight. 20 years, it's 40% of my life, and guess what? I'll invest even more until this gets done. Thank you, Mr. Bowman. Thank you, Mr. Latimer, for, for being here. And I look forward to working with you till this gets done. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, Legislator Alvarado highlighted that this is an issue of impact on the neighborhood, but it's also an impact on the environment. The Hudson River that's right out our front door here is a beautiful river. And, and how we treat point source pollution that comes from sewer treatment plants. We have two others in Westchester further up the line at Peekskill and Ossining. We have four over on the Long Island Sound. How we respond to that and how we upgrade those plants and, and improve them is what improves the quality of the effluent that goes out into the Hudson River, that it be cleaner and it be uh, something that, that affects the environment in a positive way, not a negative way. Now, Congressman Bowman just got my arm out of, out of the side of the cameras and made sure they twisted it just enough to know there's going to be county money in this project, too. It ain't going to be just a gift. So that's a pretty smart cookie. That, uh, <laughs> it's not all ask, it's, uh, it's give a little too. And, and the county, through our capital program, will, once we know what, what final results we do get from the federal government, we're going to talk to our friends in the state, by the way. I know that uh, the legislators that represent this area, Andre Stewart-Cousins, at the state senate level is in session in Albany, otherwise she'd be here. She's running the state senate. That's a significant job. And we also have uh, our assembly member, Gary Pretlow, who represents this area, uh, who is also a senior member of the assembly, so he's not able to be here with us. But, but they are involved in this process, and we're going to tap the state, too, to try to resolve this issue that's been unresolved for a long time. Um, the, the, the other partner in all of this, less so for the true treatment plan itself, but for the overall upgrade of the neighborhood, is the city of Yonkers. Mayor Mike Spano, the members of the city council, have com been committed to this neighborhood in making this change happen. And we know that it's expensive, but we also know that it's necessary. So leadership on the city council has been shown by, uh, by Councilwoman uh, Corazon Pineda, and uh, she is with us here. She's the majority leader of the city council, and she represents the other level of government that will work together in this cooperative partnership. Madam Leader. Thank you, Mr. County Executive. Um, this right here shows how important partnerships are on different levels of government. We all um, talk about quality of life issues, and we all talk about the importance of it. So today, we really focus on how can we improve quality of life issues for the people who are affected the most. And the residents of Ludlow Park have been affected for years um, by the odors of the sewage treatment plant, by the pollut pollutants. And today, we come before them and we're saying, we, are, we, we understand uh, the need for investment in our infrastructure in the sewage treatment plant, the wastewater treatment plant. And I'm so grateful for our congressman um, to deliver on, uh, on the, to deliver these funds for this plant, on our county executive for, uh, for, for fulfilling uh, this, this need for the community, for our legislator. We're also advocating for the community, for working with county government and local government. And although we play a small role, um, it's a role nonetheless. And I'm just grateful to 
for these partnerships. I'm grateful to move forward with this. And I think the community here in Southwest Yonkers is going to so appreciate it. And I too, because I actually live in Lolo Park. So I think that, you know, it's, it's a win-win for all. And really we're preserving our environment, our communities, and showing folks that, you know, quality of life really means something. And it's not just a phrase that we say during election season. So before we go to questions, just uh, one general comment. Whenever the public officials talk in a context like this and we say this is what we're fighting for, this is what we want to try to achieve, there's a natural cynicism. It, it, is, a, uh, it is an aspirational goal to talk about trying to achieve money to fix a problem. But I, what I would highlight for you, and I think it's relevant in this case, we had the aspirational goal of fixing the sprain ridge pools that sit up on the other side of Yonkers that were empty for eight years. They had a tree growing out of one of them. I'm not sure how many of you covered that story, but we made a commitment to fix those pools, and we did. And now the pools will be open again for the second straight year where kids, or third straight year, where the kids can go in and enjoy it. We made a commitment to improve Tibbetts Park, and if you go over there and see the soccer fields that have recently been uh, set up a year ago, that's an improvement. Now, we've got more improvement to do at Tibbetts. We're not finished with what has to be done at Tibbetts. Uh, and we had to deal with issues like the one that you covered recently where uh, some unscrupulous people decided that, that, that a county park was a nice place to dump a bunch of tires rather than dispose of it for a cost as the way they were supposed to do it. But, but we work on that issue and go forward. We've made a commitment to fix the South County Trailway, which is not too far from here, and it, and it follows our commitment that's been delivered upon to fix the North County Trailway. And, and we're going to be showing you in the next few days what the New Rochelle Family Court was like. The New Rochelle Family Court was debated for six and a half years under the prior uh, county administration, we've actually got it done. It's going to open. And soon enough, we'll show you how, what progress we're making on Memorial Field. So it is fair to say, uh, trust but verify. And in this case, what we're, what we're looking forward is consistent with the way that we've gone about doing our business in the county, which is we've identified a problem, we've priced it out. This is a huge ticket. That's why we turn to our friends in the federal government and to the state to get some assistance. But as sure as we fixed those pools, the, uh, uh, the soccer court, the Nourishell Family Court, Memorial Field, that is how committed we are to making sure this happens. And I would tell you this, whatever length of time it takes to, uh, to allocate the money, find the money, let the contracts, do all the construction work, that may not happen. The ribbon may not get cut while I'm in office at some point in time, but it doesn't matter. What matters is, is that if it's going to take multiple years to get to the end result of this, we start it now. We have a congressman who's going to bat for us. We have a city council that's supportive of what we're doing. The Board of Legislators is supportive. We know we've got state friends, so we move forward. With that, I'm happy to open it up to anybody from the press. You're welcome to address questions to anybody, the congressman or any of the rest of us, and uh, we'll answer as many questions as you have. I don't know if we have a remote question function, Joe. Yeah, All right, right, so it's everybody here. So Tony Aiello, you can take it off. So as the federal government evaluates the competing projects that are seeking funding, they're no doubt going to look at your PowerPoint showing, uh, and this is just from a few weeks ago, $37 million in odor mitigation here already in recent years. And the list of complaints shows not a single complaint about odor filed with the plant in January, in December, January, or February, and only two in March. So how are you going to justify another $69 million when it would appear that the $37 million has, I mean, I, unless you're, you're arguing that the $37 million went for nothing. No. No, I think what, what there has been a debate in the community as to whether or not their complaints have been properly lodged in the right place. There are people who complained and perhaps it didn't get into the system, but there have been plenty of complaints. I was on a, uh, a Zoom meeting that they had with the Ludlow Park residents yes, 10 days ago, or something like that, and that was a debatable point about whether the numbers that we show are accurate to the community. I'm sure, Tony, if you wanted to talk to the leaders of the uh, neighborhood, they would tell you there are plenty of complaints. So I don't think it's a question of not having sufficient complaints. The, the money that we've invested already is part of what the county has to do to match what the, the money that we are asking for higher levels of government to do. And I, I would ask you to get the hard details from our professionals, but it's not simply doing one thing that's going to stop the odor control. There's a host of different actions that have to happen. It's beyond my technical knowledge to explain it, but, uh, but I will tell you that, that these, uh, this particular sewer treatment plant has gone a long period of time without what would be normal upgrades that would put more modern equipment in. We have, you know, we've, we have, and not, not during my tenure, but we've tried to, let's just get past this budget. Let's just pay at that budget. Don't ask for anything. Don't add for anything. And that's really the catch-up that we're in now. We have to catch up 
to uh, opportunities that we could have done 10 years ago, maybe longer, and that justifies why the money is there. Now, before we get dime one from the federal government, they're going to ask us for information out the wazoo. What we have done, and, and properly so, what we've done is identify a number that we can back up with specifics, and we're happy to share those specifics with you. And I guarantee you, when you start looking at it, you'll be just like me. You're going to need to have somebody who knows more about the physical structure of sewer treatment plants to explain it. But uh, we will certainly make our team available to anybody in the press to go into the guts of the details of how we envision that number being a valid number. So when you take the $37 million and $69 million, that's north of $100 million. Uh, that's a lot of money. Yes, it is a lot of money. That's why the county can't do it on its own. If we were talking about a $10 million fix and this thing would be fine, we'd do it. We'd see Jamal and say, how you doing, Jamal? We wouldn't, we wouldn't bother him about this. We might ask him about the train service. That, that might be fine. We're all seriously talking. But this, is, this is, as was pointed out by Legislator Alvarado, this is where more than half of Westchester County's sewage treatment gets treated. We have a sewer treatment plant in Rye, upscale community and a sewer treatment plant. We have a sewer treatment plant in Mamaritic that's bigger than the one in Rye. That too is an upscale community. Uh, but uh, the, the amount of sewage they treat is relatively small and we don't get anything like the same kind of problems we have here. The size and scope of this sewer treatment plant, wastewater treatment plant, is why we have such a, a major cost factor in bringing it up to speed. And as I said, you can certainly look at the other plants we have. We, we've invested money in New Rochelle, we're investing money in Havant, Port Chester. Those, those serve larger constituencies on the Sound Shore. But this is the mother of all sewer treatment plants in our county. And because of the proximity of the neighborhood, that's why we can justify this kind of money needed. And finally, um, is it fair to say the $69 million is not only for odor control, it's for a whole host of issues involving this plant? Well, odor control is probably the single largest complaint, but it's, it's not the only one. And th the money goes as much to modernize the, the, uh, the equipment here and the structure and the function. And in the act of modernization, we make a major step toward odor control as well as the capping of it, which, you know, most people will see it, they say, oh, you put a cap on the top, that'll solve it. That's not quite simple enough. There are other structures underneath it uh, that need to be modernized. We have some very old facilities that are here. They're functional, but but they're they're declining in their in their future life. And you know we hadn't done it up to now, but if we miss this opportunity to make this fix, it's only going to be worse. And what we might find is a crisis at some point where something happens here, and then we can't treat the sewage that that comes through here, and then you're discharging raw sewage into the Hudson River, and that would be the worst of all possible. And so we're trying to be. Uh, 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 preemptive in, in doing the things we have to do. And yes, it is more than just over control. Thank you. Okay, other questions? The plant, will the plant have to be shut down during the, this? The plant will operate during this period of time. Uh, it will be difficult, and, and our leadership here that do not already have gray hair will indeed have gray hair by the end of that process. But, they, but they've worked out a, an arrangement by which improvements can be made and the plant can continue to operate. But it isn't easy. It's the same philosophy that you've seen us use so far when we've done other major repairs. We've repaired, uh, you know, bridges, smaller bridges like the Ashford Avenue Bridge, which is a lifeline between those two communities. We're able to keep it open. It creates a traffic mess, but it stayed open. And then at the end of the day, when it was finished, we resumed the normal capacity of the, of the facility. And how long would be the time frame for the, this correction? To it's a good question. Uh, can you give me a, a time frame between start to finish, once we get started? Round number. It takes typically um, six months to put out a job. It takes typically about a year uh, or more for design. And then based on you know, the scope of the project, it could be a two-year project, it could be a three-year project. Um, a lot of our projects are two years you know, or sometimes more, depending on, again, what the scope of the job, how big it is. So it wouldn't be any sooner than three years and more likely closer to five years, given the timeline you said. But, but, no, 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 just to answer the question. We cannot shut this thing down, <laughs> to answer your question. It's too much processing. This community couldn't exist, half of Westchester couldn't exist without us. And we're just asking, you know, give us what we need for this to be the best possible neighbor. We know it's not going anywhere. So, no, it cannot be shut down. And w we get the most complaints when upgrades are happening in this plant. And I've seen it for at least 20 years when we had that first cup of coffee, you and I. <laughs> so just to summarize your question, three to five years, three is a very aggressive, quick schedule, five would be longer. The benefits of the improvement 
would not wait until year five. You'd start to see the benefit of the improvement as you're doing work going along, but the full benefit wouldn't come until the project was completed. We'll save five years, which ensures that I'm not the guy that cuts the ribbon. These folks may be very well here, but me, <laughs> me, I will be watching on TV and you'll show me the ribbon cutting when it comes. Other questions to the congressman or to the legislator or the majority leader? Any other questions that you have? If, if not, I invite you again to talk to Commissioner Kapicki. Uh, he can tell you some of the specifics that you probably want to have in your story so that you're talking with a little more substance than I've been able to give you. Absent that, we appreciate you taking the time to come with us. Uh, the congressman staff is here, the legislator and the councilwoman are here for any other follow-up you need. Thank you very much for being with us here, and uh, we'll check back in with you with a little bit of success. Congressman, thank you, my brother. Thank you.